Hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter 5 is distance traveled modification. So the distance a vehicle travels can be calculated as follows. Distance is equal to speed times time. So you write a method named distance that, that accepts a vehicle's speed and time as arguments and returns the distance the vehicle has traveled. Modify the distance traveled program you wrote in chapter 4, program challenge 2, to use the method. All right, so we are going to um, mod modify the program challenge two in chapter four, and it's it's done it's done like um, it's done the way the way the question asked us us to do it, but we're going to modify it and create a method uh, out of the program. So let's open that that program over here. Um, chapter four, program challenge two, which is distance traveled. Yes, distance traveled. So distance traveled should be here. So this is the distance traveled program. Um, yes, this, this is the program distance traveled. And this is the question. So what I'm going to do is, let me first of all, I'm going to go ahead and cut this question. So, and I'll close this file. This is a distance travel program. I'm going to go, go ahead and save this file as the distance travel modification, which is basically chapter uh, chapter nine. Okay, I think it's chapter uh, chapter five, question nine. So I'm going to modify this as I'm going to save it in chapter five. Create a new folder for distance. I think that's the name. Distance traveled modification. And then I'll save this one as distance traveled modification. Now the name of the file has to match the name of the class, so I need to change the name of the class to match this name. Otherwise, I'll get I'll get an error. So I'll save this in this folder and change this to distance traveled modification. I haven't compiled it yet, so I'm not getting any error. Distance traveled modification, right? So now it matches the name of the file. The class name matches the name of the file. So when I compile this, it shouldn't give me any problems. Oops, it, do, it does. So it says that, let's see. I think it's, it still doesn't match distance travel. Okay, this is 2L. Oh, no, that's correct. Okay, it's supposed to be 1L, but it's fine. Um, what What's wrong? Modification, modification, modification. All right. So this is working. What's, what's the error saying? Should be declared in a file name distance travel. Is that, is that not save the same thing? Distance traveled. Modi. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see this. <laughs> I'm sure some people saw it and you were going like, why? Why is he not seeing it? Over here, I named it as modification. Modification, right? Yeah, so now it's fine. All right, it is supposed to actually one L. So let me do this, and I need to also rename this. But it's not going to really change it if I try to compile. It's not really going to change it. So first of all, let me just go ahead and save this as again, because I've tried this before and it's not, it didn't work. So I'm going to save this as. Before that, let me go. Let me just go ahead and on the desktop and delete it. it Delete the file that's already in there. This is also two L or one L. It's one L. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this. I don't need it. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I actually, de actually deleted this file. So I hope this works. Let me go ahead and save this as. Yeah, distance traveled one L. Dot Java, and this matches this. I, have the, I still have the fault. So I didn't save it. Where is it? All right. I still have the folder, so distance traveled. I'm sorry for all this. I'm just I'm just trying to get this right. Yeah. Oh, I did. I did save it. Okay, so write it. I did save it. Okay, so now we're fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste the new question so that it doesn't look like the the old question. Okay. So now I have distance travel modification. So that's the ninth question in chapter five. All right, so the distance a vehicle travels can be calculated calculated as follows. So this is the question. Write a method named distance that accepts a vehicle's name and time as argument. 
relative method, yeah. And returns the distance the vehicle has traveled. Modify the distance traveled program you wrote in chapter four. So which is this program to use a method? All right. So, all right. So over here we 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 know uh, we know that we're we're basically trying to. If I run this program, and let me just quickly do that. We're, it's going to ask us to enter a speed of the vehicle. I'm going to enter forty, and enter the number of hours the vehicle has traveled. I'm going to enter three. It's going to give us. The distance traveled for each hour of the three hours of type. So it's going to tell me the hours. Sorry, the distance traveled for hour one, the distance traveled for hour two, and the distance traveled for hour three. So when I hit enter, it tells me the distance traveled for hour one, distance traveled for hour two, and distance traveled for hour three. If I entered four, or even five, first of all, forty for the speed and five for the hour. It's going to give me this distance traveled for each hour, basically. So it wants us to just keep the program the same, but just modify it by using a method or using methods. Okay, so the program is going to given given a speed and given a speed and then let's say how many hours the vehicle traveled. It's going to calculate the distance traveled for each hour the dis the, each hour the the car or the vehicle traveled. Um, yeah, it's going to give us the distance traveled for each hour the vehicle traveled from one all the way to how long the vehicle traveled in hours. All right, so it says we should write a method named distance. That is going to accept the vehicle speed and time as argument. So let's go ahead and let's first focus on writing the method. So I'm going to create a space here. Oops. Now, like I, like I mentioned in the, in the, the program in chapter five, some people go ahead and declare the error. Actually, Tony Gaddis, the author in the book, he goes ahead to declare his or, do, or define his methods right below the main method. If that still works. That's fine. As soon as you declare, the, you define the method right under the main. It's still available. We can call it in, in main, even though it's below. You know, it's, it's 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 even though it looks like it's below main, you can still define the method and it's still going to work. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and define mine above it. I do it sometimes. Sometimes I declare it above the main method. Sometimes sometimes I declare it below the main method. They both work. As soon as you declare it, it's, it's available. You can use it as long as it's in the class. Okay, so um, actually, it's not like as, as long as it's in the class, but when you define the method, it's available. It's available to this class. Okay, it's available. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> All right, so we should define a method, write a method named distance. So it's going to accept the vehicle speed and time as arguments. So let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and create a public static method. Public because this this method is going to be public or it's going to be available to code outside this class. Static because this method belongs to this class. Now this method is, let's see if it, it, it returns anything. Over here it says it returns, okay, it returns the distance the vehicle has traveled. Now the distance of vehicle travel can be a double. Okay, it can be two hundred and fifty-six point five meters, right? So because of that, I'm going to define the return value as a double. So it's going to return a double, and it says we should call it right method named distance. So I'm going to call it distance. Now over here. This method is going to be to accept a couple of arguments, so I'm going to go ahead and define a couple of parameters. It says the method is going to accept a vehicle speed and time as argument. So I know that this method is going to accept vehicle speed and time. Now the speed, I'm, I'm defining it as a double because now the you know a double speed can be, I mean a speed of the, of a data type double can be passed into this method as an argument. So the speed, let's say 40.5 miles per hour, um, can be passed into this as an argument. So I'm going to define it as a double. So double speed. And it's, it also says we should go ahead and let's see how I define the time. Okay. That time travel I defined as an integer. So it should ac accept the speed and time as an argument. Now the time I, I specified is a, as an integer. Because the time we're dealing with hours here, you know, we can define it as a double, you know, but let's let's just define it as an as an as an integer over here so that we kind of limit it to hours because th I think that's what that's how this question looks like. We're dealing with hours here, but you can define it to doubles if you want. So I'm going to define the hour, the time tra the time, okay, the time arguments as 
an integer because he's just going to type in an integer let's say six hours seven hours but you can define it as a double if you want so int time time just time because that's what we said so it's going to do it's going to accept the vehicle speed and time as arguments and it's going to return the distance okay so i'm going to it's going to uh, return the distance which is going to be a double but first of all we need to calculate the the distance the vehicle has traveled in the method and return it because that's what it says the, the method returns so let's go ahead and create a, a, a variable which, which is going to be a double okay we are, we are returning the distance the vehicle has traveled so double distance traveled okay the reason why i'm defining as a double is, is because we can get a distance travel of let's say 200.52 um meters or something or you know or mouse mouse um let's see uh, i mean the distance travel basically M meters i don't know um i don't know what it wants us to what unit it wants us to a return but let's say the distance could be a, a double that's why i'm defining it defining it as a double so i'm defining the variable distance travel to hold the distance travel and i'm going to over here calculate the distance travel they've given us the formula over here that distance is equal to speed times time so the distance traveled now is going to be equal to I said distance over here. The distance traveled is going to be equal to now the speed that a user or, or that was passed to this method as an argument times the time that the, that was passed to this argument as an that was passed to this method as an argument. Okay, the speed that was passed to this method as an argument and the time that was passed to this method as an argument. This is the formula over here. Distance is equal to speed times time. So distance traveled is equal to the speed that was passed to this method as an argument times the time that was passed to this method as an argument. And once we've, we're done finding the distance traveled, the question over here says it returns the distance the vehicle has traveled. So you want to go ahead and return the distance traveled over here. You want to return it. So when we call this method, we, we give it the speed and time. It's going to return the distance traveled. Modify the distance traveled program you wrote in chapter four, programming challenge two to use the method over here. Okay, so over here in the for loop over here, you can, can see that we were doing the same thing. We were, t we were ca calculating the distance traveled by multiplying the hour. Okay, the hour is basically, uh, let's see. Yeah. By so the hour is in this case is is basically our uh, our time, okay. By and multiplying it by the speed, okay. Now over here we use a loop, and the hour in the loop, the hour was keeping track of each hour starting from one all the way to the all the way to the time traveled, okay. All the way to the time traveled. So let's see. yeah yeah over here so okay so we are going to accept <coughs> we are accepting the speed over here we are first of all we are accepting the, the, the user speed we are accepting the, the, accepting the time travel the time travel is going to be let's say the, the hours that is a type let's say five or six this loop is going to loop however many times the user, the user, the user specifies for time travel if the user specifies six hours if the vehicle has traveled then this loop is going to loop six times starting from one and each hour okay is going to represent the, the time that is going to be passed into this method so we are passing in the hours starting from one all the way to the time travel each time and 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 the one is going to be incremented each time all the way to the time traveled so if it's six we are we are loop, we are loop iterating six times starting from one one two three four five the variable hour is going to keep track of the hour and each time the loop I trace, the hour is going to be passed into this method when we call it as the time. So the first time we're going to pass one, the second time we're going to pass two, all the way to the time travel. And the vehicle speed is going to be the vehicle speed I user typed. We're going to pass in that. So instead of calculating this, and instead of calculating, you know, this basically doing this calculation in distance traveled, okay. Let's go ahead and call the method distance. Let's call it. I'm going to call it distance. And we know that distance accepts two arguments. It, it accepts the speed and then the time. Okay, so the speed we know is going to be the vehicle's speed that user typed. So I'm going to pass in the vehicle speed. 
that the user typed times or oh not not times uh, this is not the re a regular statement this is a function it takes in two arguments it takes in the speed and the time so a comma here and then now the time we already know how, how the max we already know the time travel this is the time travel if it's six this is the time travel six but we are looping from one to the time travel right so each time this loop uh, this loop iterates we want to pass in the current hour okay that we want to find a distance for so the first time this loop iterate we're starting from one so we are passing in one okay we are passing in the contents of hour in this method and it's calculating the distance traveled for the first hour and then displaying it here so and then the hour is incremented to two and then the, we are passing in the vehicle speed times the, the the current hour which is two all the way and, and then calculating the distance then it's going to be returned so distance travel is going to hold it the distance travel for hour two and it's going to print that and then hour is going to be incremented again to three so now it's going to be the vehicle speed times three it's going to return to distance traveled and that's going to be the, that's going to be the distance traveled for hour three so basically hour is going to be our time okay our time that's going to be passed into this distance method each time it's going to be the specific time we are the specific hour we are trying to find the distance traveled for so hour is going to represent our time argument over here that's going to be passed into this method each time the loop i trade it's always going to represent that and the loop is starting from one all the way to the time traveled so if the user types in five hours we're starting from one all the way to five and each time we're starting from one all the way to five each time hour is going to keep track of the hours inc incremented each time all the way to all the way to the time travel it's going to be passed into this uh, method and it's going to calculate the distance traveled for each hour okay all right <laughs> i didn't mean to talk too much there i was just trying to make sure it's clear all right all right so now it's going to basically calculate the distance traveled for that particular hour and then display it here so now we're done we're done we're calling this method it's returning a value the distance travel for that particular time in this case that particular hour you see in the loop and we are finding the distance travel and then displaying it so let's try this and see if it works so now we've defined a method and we are using that method instead we are calculating the distance for the particular hour and then and then returning it storing it, storing it in distance travel and then, and then displaying it so let's try it i'm going to compile this and we, we don't have any errors and let's run this Please enter the vehicle speed. I'm going to still enter 40. Enter the number of hours the vehicle has traveled. I'm going to enter three and hit enter. And it still gives us the correct, correct. it's still working. It's still give, giving us the correct value. So I'm going to compile this again, run it, and then hit enter. Um, actually, sorry, type in, let's say 40 miles. Type in 10 for hours travel. It should give me the distance traveled for each hour of the 10 hours. So when I hit enter, I have 10 hours, and this is the distance traveled for each hour of, of the 10 hours. All right, so we've modified the program with a method, and it works. And it works. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, bye-bye.